I want to talk a little about some of the issues that came up with some of the introductions to your lit reviews. So I made a sample, and it's not a perfect sample. I, there's a couple of things I specifically want to show you. The first one is just a formatting thing. For those people who don't know how to do double spacing, let's say you go ahead and write your doc, and then you can select all, go up to format, do paragraph, and you'll get the paragraph box. Check your line spacing to double. Click OK. Boom. Immediately, I've got a double spaced paper. Okay, so no more of this hand trying to format. It's, it takes way too much of your time. All right, so let's look at our introduction. We wanted basically a four paragraph introduction. If you're going to start with a grand sweeping statement, you need to be careful because we as educators writing formal papers can't just make these kinds of statements. They either need to be cited, coming from a valid source, or, particularly in this sense, you don't need these grand sweeping statements. Your introduction should relate to you. So here's my example. Uh, my path to becoming a teacher wasn't easy, blah, blah, blah. Every paragraph needs to be at least two sentences. Your opening paragraph should have at least three, just to kind of give a sense of who you are, where you're going with this paper. Then your second paragraph, start to talk about what the issues are that kind of make you think along the lines of your topic. Um, so in, in one, I tell who I am and what my situation is. This leads me to question the role that email has played, okay, and give some examples. Why is this topic that you're going to spend time studying, why is it worth doing so? Okay, then we move down to paragraph three. This is where you start really getting a little more teachery and professionally uh, with my own personal understanding. As a starting point, I begin to wonder more about email as a tool for communication. This is where you can start sticking your research questions in a way that makes sense. We now have context why the things you're interested in studying are actually interesting and valid. And then your fourth paragraph is where you sum it all up. So here I am today, my studies have given me this opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And then you can officially lead into your research questions so that then you can start writing your paper. All right? Now, I want to state one more time, you can quote, but you cannot, if you're going to paraphrase, you actually have to paraphrase. To say that Professor Smith believes that blah, 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 and then just copy and paste is not acceptable. You have to either directly show that this is a quote, or you need to paraphrase what Dr. So-and-so actually said. In this week's assignments, you have your needs assessment survey, and it does a really nice job of explaining what all goes into that, and a couple examples, that's due. And then, of course, the threaded discussions, which have already started off very nicely this week. And please, please, I know you're busy, do find the time to keep working on your lit review paper and your electronic portfolio. Uh, for those of you who I asked to rewrite your intro, I hope this has given you a better idea of what you need to put in. For those of you who did really well on your intro, at the very least, maybe you'll want to tweak it a little bit. A general note, there's, and I, again, I understand most of the people in the class, English is your second language. However, your writing still has to be at that formal master's level. So please watch your verb tenses. I highly recommend after you write your paper, go through a couple drafts, that you read it out loud and read it to someone who is a native English speaker so they can help you catch small little things that maybe don't seem much, but they add up really fast to the overall quality of the paper. Okay, my friends, have a great week. I will talk to you soon.